And good morning, everyone. How are we uh, doing this happy Friday? And I'm trying to figure out if I'm live here, but I think we are. So good morning. We are live. Uh, my name is Sia Yasso Chornrat. And I'm Aaron Gregor. And this is I'm the Sheila. after. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Sheila. Uh, and this is the Afterglow uh, Live Recap Podcast. Uh, we are your co-hosts, and we are also the founders of Innovation Media Enterprises and the co-hosts of Innovation Calling Podcast. So what are we, what are we recapping? Someday I'll say this correctly. Uh, we discuss the weekly Global Leaders Organization Speaker Series. So what we do is we take the highlights of the valuable concepts, action items, and food for thought from amazing thought leaders that GLOW curates on a weekly basis. So with that, we invite a special GLOW member to join us in the conversation and take their feedback. And this week, we are thrilled to welcome Sheila Steinmark with Mog XP um, to the show. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you so much for having me. We are thrilled to have you. And so, Sheila, tell us about yourself. What's your history? And, you know, uh, I guess tell us why you joined GLOW. Well, I joined GLOW because I think it's important for entrepreneurs to get to know each other and you build a fabulous network. Um, as far as, as who I am and where I come from, I, um, I'm a combat veteran from an airborne unit. I'm an entrepreneur and uh, I'm a businesswoman who has worked with some of the largest corporations in the world. And my passion is working with small businesses. So you say small businesses, how small are we looking here? Um, I typically stick with companies that, that have been in business a handful of years. Um, I think my, my smallest client has 12 employees. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, so that, well, 12 employees is not yeah. totally small. I mean, I was thinking, when you say small, I was thinking like a startup kind of thing where it's like maybe under five. You know, for those, for those types of clients, very often I, it's easier to give them my time and give them some expertise and and pass it on versus trying to charge somebody for something that they're not sure where they're going yet. And um, so it's it's kind of a balance. Um, you go where where people appreciate what you do. And very often when you're looking at the smaller businesses, they're overwhelmed enough with the day to day before they're really able to look at the long-term strategies. And so when you're in survival mode, it's really hard to, to look at what's your five-year plan and what are the seeds that you're gonna plant now that are gonna get you there. So for small businesses, it's, you know, let them, let them get their feet wet, let them grow a little bit, let, let them feel the pain a little bit. And then when they've, they've had some successes, they know who they are and they've realized that they can't be all things to all people. Then you sit down with them and you, and you start looking at what is your voice, what is your vision, and what is your message? That is so true. And, and oftentimes, I think uh, ideally with businesses, they, they have a product or a service and they focus on that, but not getting down to that core value, who you are with your actual mission and the end goal for your clients as well as for yourself. Sometimes you just forget about that, right? Because you're just thinking, I've got a widget and I'm going to go make and sell this widget. So what was it about GLOW that attracted you to, to join our, this organization? I knew some of the people who are part of it. And knowing that, I just knew it was the right place for me. Um, knowing you, knowing Aaron, um, I look at it and I'm like, these are businesswomen I can respect. I can trust that they're going to bring in quality people. And we're going to have opportunities to figure out how to help one another, how do we serve each other, and how do we grow our businesses. Love it. And that's exactly what uh, GLOW is all about, right? So they talk about, you know, access to capital, you know, the fact that there's a commerce portion of our uh, membership, as well as building in that community. And I think community is probably the hardest and strongest thing that they have is to know that it's not just us shaking hands and glad handing and, you know, giving each other business cards and having a couple drinks. There's a lot more depth to it, which I, I think is really right. cool. So Let's talk about depth and, uh, you know, making things in relationships, you know, really, you know, maximizing those types of relationships. We had Tony Jerry this week. Um, I got to be honest with you. I don't, I don't even know, didn't know who Tony Jerry is. And then all of a sudden, all the GLOW members were like, oh my gosh, how amazing is this? And I'm thinking, oh, I need some education. So Sheila, how do you know Tony Jerry? 
I've heard Tony speak multiple times and I think I own eight of his books. This is something that I actually put in my, in my purse. And when I'm between meetings, especially if I just, I need some clarity in my life and to, to refocus, it's like, okay, spend the few minutes it takes to read his business card book and get those pointers and refocus yourself. And sometimes we all need a kick in the butt. And Tony's really good at that. Uh, Aaron, what did you think with, with the kicking butt part of it? Well, I didn't know who Tony Jerry was. And I didn't know I needed 10 books. Like I'm, yeah, no, I feel like I kind of got left out of this train, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he was like a ball of flipping energy. Like, I'll be honest with you guys too. I'm like looking all over, but I usually have a notepad with like a book that I write notes in and I didn't have it available. And I was like, well, I don't know how many notes I'm going to take. And now I've got this like paper calendar with like crap written all over it. Cause I was like, Oh, I got to write that down. Oh, I got to write that down. So it's like these notes that are kind of everywhere because I'm like, Oh, that's a really good point. And that's a really good point. And uh, yeah. And then I, I, he's just, wow. He is a ball of energy. I mean, so yeah. he's fabulous, but if you're looking for the notes, I'm telling you this size, just perfect to, to right. just thump you once in a while and get you redirected. So I I've had the privilege of hearing him speak multiple times and then sitting down at dinner with him one night and just hearing him and his outlook on life of, of how to get yourself unstuck sometimes Yeah, I love and excuses. He doesn't want to hear excuses because when it comes down to it, excuses are a diamond, a dime a dozen, you know, like wishes and dreams. If you have a goal and it's not written down, it's a wish or a dream. Yeah, no, it's, I loved it. And okay. Who has a book of three, like 200 or I was going to say 300. That was exaggerating, but still like 200 goals. <laughs> I have 20 goals for 2020 and that exhausts me. He has a book that literally summarizes the 50 something books he's written. Wow. I feel like yeah. a stalker. He, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I mean, okay. So you, cause you've spent time with him. Does he drink mm -hmm. coffee or is that just in him? <laughs> that is him. He is on fire. Okay. See, but that's, that's what makes him such a great speaker because he can pour that passion into people. And by, by following up with the books and hearing his, his, um, videos and so on, it re-energizes you when you've kind of lost that every once in a while, we all need that jolt. And, and Tony's a jolt. Oh, no, he's like a Brendan. <laughs> the joke used to be, I just wish, because we used to, we used to go to a lot of his events. I'm like, I want us to all like the friends that I made there. I'm like, I want us to all move into the Marriott and then just start every day. And Tony would be this exact same thing. I need Tony just to like, give me a pep talk, like 8am, give me a pep talk and I'm set for the day. Like we'll just mm -hmm. live together for a while so he can do that. But he's the exact same type of personality. Like I know it. Uh, I know what I'm supposed to do. I just need somebody to like pep talk me and remind me in the morning and then I'm good to go. I don't know. Is it a pep talk or a freaking like wallow sound? Like he's really, like you said, he's like an energy bomb. Like it's almost infectious in a way, but I do have to ask because, and I did ask uh, earlier on this is uh, I felt like he has so much information to share and give. I kind of felt like he was almost like, I don't say vomiting, but he was throwing so much at us all at once. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was a little overwhelmed. Well, the plus is, is that in Tony's book, he also has an online component. So um, this is this is great. And it's a cut down version of strategic acceleration. And strategic acceleration has, I think, 19 exercises that go with it. But for everything he talked about, all of his major points, there are 19 different exercises that you walk through that ask the hard questions that as an entrepreneur, you need to look at. And if you can't answer them, you probably need to, to read it again and go back through and figure out why you're in business. I like it. He's, br it. he's brutally honest. Oh, yeah. How often do we look at our own businesses and be brutally honest? I know I don't. I know Aaron yells at me a lot, like, you know, get, get your head out of the clouds. But how you say that you need to, to have that type of focus. How, what do you guys think percentage-wise of entrepreneurs actually have that 
Well, when you say type of focus, what do you mean type of focus? Like being brutally honest type of focus and reassessing or just type of focus? I know what I'm doing. I do it every day. Ooh, I, I guess either one. Which would, would you, which would you take as a priority between the two from, from those perspectives? I think brutal, brutal honesty, 15%. I think I know what I'm supposed to do. I do it maybe a little higher, but still probably mm, 50. I think if you're brutally honest with yourself on a regular basis and you do a check-in and, and one of the things he talks about is we don't think enough. We don't spend enough time as entrepreneurs just thinking. And if we took that time to be brutally honest with ourselves, and reset ourselves, then it really comes down to, are you doing the things you need to do? And every day I have to ask myself, and, and we talked about this um, earlier b before we were on camera, was every night I ask myself, did I earn my paycheck? I love that question. Did I earn my paycheck? Um, yeah. No, can I interject like one thing too that I love? Uh, I was just listening to a podcast that... Hugh Jackman was on and every morning he writes his intention for the day. And I've started doing this and it's really helpful, but you write it as if you, you finish the day. So in the morning you say, I did this today. I was very intentional with my family. I spent, you know, X amount doing this. Like you really plan the day and then you assess that every day to say, how did I do? And so you can read that intention you set for the morning and be able to rate yourself and say, well, you, that was a 10 out of 10, great job, or mm -hmm. mm. you kind of mm -hmm. sucked it up, what derailed you? And really mm -hmm. doing that every morning is a great exercise too. Like Tony asking about how many hours are in the week and how do you spend those hours? Yeah. If you look at your hours and you are accountable to the hours that you spend, how can you not succeed? Because if you look at the effort you think about him talking about making sure that you're spending the time thinking and the balance between the strategy and the tactics and the tactics are actually doing things because you could spend, I mean, I know people who've done business plans and it has taken them so long to do their business plan that they've gone out of, out of business because they didn't have money to fund it because it has to be a balance between strategy and tactics. So the strategy is the thinking, the tactics is doing. And so if you look at your day, have you spent the time you need to, to think? And have you spent the time doing? I could not agree more. That could not agree more. In fact, um, the way I viewed it, uh, when I was in corporate sales, I, I quantified not my time only, but I also my quota in relation to it. So basically, if I had a hundred million dollar quota and I had 21 days to achieve it, I broke that down and said, okay, I, so every hour is a hundred. I'm not doing the math, right? People, please don't chastise me, <laughs> but basically I would look back and go, okay, in that one hour, did I sell a hundred thousand dollars? And if I'm going to spend the time of an hour with someone, is that a hundred thousand dollars worth my time or more? Right. And that really helped me focus on the time investment and also understanding that activity that I'm doing. Is it for, you know, a strategic reason or is it something that's tactical like you just mentioned? So, Sheila, I love the way that you put it like that. Um, I'm going to have to start going back to practice that. I haven't really done it as an entrepreneur. So that was a good reminder. So something I would suggest you do. Um, law firms, engineering firms, agencies, they all block their time. And they do it in 15 minute increments and you literally take a paper calendar and you draw a line when you start a task and then you draw a line for when you finish it and you do that all day long. And what it does is it shows you exactly how you spend your time. And if you're on a phone call or you're, you're BSing and, and had, you know, headed out to lunch and you take an hour and a half lunch. But when you look back through your day and you wonder why you didn't get the things done, you want to get done, you look at your calendar. And think about all those agencies and all those law firms, the amount of money that they make by using this process because it's tried and true. If you have to account for every 15 minutes of your day, you simply don't piss your day away. I love that. I didn't yeah. think of that. So 
they're simple. And this is a Tony technique or is this just something that you would learn? No, it's something I've learned, but it, it follows his, tr- his teachings, which is be accountable for your day. If you have 168 hours yeah. of, a, of, a, of a week, you don't get any more. No, successful people don't get extra hours. They make extra hours in their day. And how do you do that? By being accountable for your time. And so you do first thing first. It's first thing in the morning. You do your high leverage activities. Yes. By doing that, you do it when your mind is fresh and before the day has beaten you up. Your low, your low leverage activities, you do those later in the day. Or if you don't get to them, you push them to another day or you push them to somebody else because you have to focus on what is going to allow you to grow your business. And if it doesn't make you money, bring you visibility to help you gain more clients or elevate your brand, don't do it. Yeah, I found that by, I I did started doing it last year. I read a really good book and she gave this spreadsheet that helped track time. And I found I was telling myself a lot of BS stories about how I didn't have time. When Mm -hmm. I really did have time, I was just not utilizing time in the right way. And so I was wasting it. And that's why I've taken a lot of like social apps off my phone and just being able to really focus because those, you got to think of too, it's not just a matter of, I spent 15 minutes over here. When you get distracted and you get out of your zone, then you lose, you got to re-ramp up. So you lose that time too, that you have to re-ramp, refocusing on that task. So when you, you really have to be, and, and just being honest with yourself and saying, okay, let me track for a week and let me revisit my excuse in my head that I don't have time because I really want to see where this time is going. And can I fit in another hour a day? you know, two extra hours a week and nine times out of 10, you're probably telling yourself some BS. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chris Matthew uh, mentioned here, he's like, accountability is really important um, to be accountable to yourself as well as others. Right. Darn it. This is like, now I'm like really going to be introspective here. Cause that's, that's, some, that's, I, I really like that. So the high level, and I was trying to understand what he's talking about. So high leverage activities, whatever it might be, you have to do it when your mind is at peak performance is that right. is that right okay. and that, yeah. stuff that like the it's the stuff that uh other people really can't do like you it's a bigger picture thing so okay. you know are you spending time in the weeds just doing stuff and you're busy where somebody else could take laundry you know are you spending four hours a day on laundry when you probably should hire that out and somebody can do that for you just mm-hmm. a super basic yeah. example uh where you're focused more on you know, the household running the household as a whole, like the strategy of who's going to go where versus in the weeds doing. So that's your high leverage task that you want to be spending time on as a business leader. Interesting. So Daniel LeBrod uh, mentions as well, he calls it gem growth. So it says for GEM growth, does it increase the client base engage? Does it get my clients to use my services more money? Does it increase obviously revenue continuously or is it a one-time deal recurring revenue? That's interesting, Dan. And if Chris was uh, adding on to it, it it helps you focus. If you are living your HLAs, you can really propel your life forward, which I thought was really neat. So which also with both of their comments here is that means uh, they're open-minded in a way, Mm -hmm. right? To be able to absorb and to understand what your HLAs are. He says, uh, Tony said that he focuses his strategic partners with those that are open-minded. What did you get out of that statement? I think it's about knowing that you're doing business with people who are open to new ideas and that, that nothing is a guarantee that you put everything on the table and then things that don't work, you flip off the table and you clear and you clear it away so that everybody at the table is working to solve problems instead of, instead of diving into a problem and wallowing in it, it's what are my solutions? And so nothing is off limits. And when you pick partners that say nothing is off limits, that whatever it takes to make something happen, that's who I want to work with. That's true. That's true. I guess it's almost like that willingness to think outside the box kind of Mm -hmm. idea, right? Yeah. Or someone that's actually willing to maybe take the risk to look at looking outside the box too. Yeah. I mean, and if you're dealing with closed-minded people all the time and as business partners, like that's going to be hard to grow. Yeah. 
So here's another thing he'd mentioned here, guys, is living mastery. Don't stop at greatness. Keep asking for the next level. So uh, first off, who wants to take on and, and explain what that means? Sorry, like I'm getting hit from like all of a sudden everybody wants to talk to me in my house right now. Anyway, <laughs> oh you can't hear it. God. All right. Anyway, sorry if you see me like side conversations. But I thought this one was really good um, because I actually was thinking about this just the other day. And I don't know how much I agree with this because I don't know where the line of mastery to greatness or greatness to mastery is right like like michael jordan okay i'll talk about michael jordan because we just finished um uh the last dance i i i would put michael jordan as a master and in greatness like i'd put him in the same level to his point i think where we fail is between the good to greatness a lot of us say we're good enough um i was just going through this this is a total random example but doing this very regimented diet. I'm trying to change my body composition. I want muscles, just it's a vanity thing. Leave me alone. But I'm like eight weeks into this and I've lost a lot. I'm and I kind of was at the point where I want to quit. Like I'm good enough. Like it's good enough. Like I've done well. I, I just want to take a break. But I thought about it. I'm like, Aaron, this is where you owe it. Like, this is the line. This is the line where it's super uncomfortable. This is a line where you're done with it. You want to move on. This is the line, but what's four more weeks, like pushed through. And I think that's where people get tripped up. They make enough money. They got it. You know, they're, 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 they're good. It's good. They're good, but they're tired and they're exhausted. And it got to be a little more work. And it's that line of going over to the, to the greatness. And like I said, then it becomes, well, where's the line between greatness and mastery? And I don't know that, but I do believe there is a like point of, jumping over where you've got it like where it really sucks and it's those people who say i know it sucks but i'm not there yet and i'm still gonna go that push through so anyway get off yeah it's do you settle or do you push through it's at the end of the day have you made all the calls you need to make so you know you keep a log so you know how many calls and you have a quota so you make your 30 calls but if you make five more calls spend that extra 15 minutes the funny thing is, it's when you look at the numbers game, those last five calls just tend to turn more business. Yeah. It just does. So is it yeah. is it good enough? Are you going to settle? Are you going to be the master and, and do five more just because I can and because I'm that good? And then taking the tools that you were saying as, as you're tracking every 15 minutes, could you squeeze in that one call on that one 15 minute range? And before you know it, you've got five extra calls done. It's, it's really efficiency in a numbers game, right? I mean, if you think about it, right? So if you throw out 100 pitches, eventually you're going to have five perfect pitches. That was a baseball reference that I don't know why I did. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. It's very random, but that's okay. I know. I know. I I'm going with sales pitches. That's what I thought you were going. I didn't realize that was a baseball pitch. Yeah. No, that's the funnier part, too, because I was thinking sales pitch, but then in my head, I just went off to baseball. I don't know why. Maybe it's summertime and maybe well, that's what's distracting. Yeah. I'm sorry. Baseball <laughs> just came back. So you could be thinking about that. Exactly. Exactly. So Jonas Bull, another great uh, member, greatness and mastery. This relates to what we always say about concentration. It's not what you focus on. It's what you choose to ignore. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that way. Yeah. What you say no to yeah. what you're willing to walk away from. Yeah. So that's a question. Let me ask you guys, do you guys know how to say no? And have you mastered that? Absolutely. I wouldn't say you can't. It, but go ahead, Sheila. There's, there's a point where you have to balance your life. Um, there is no perfect scenario and anything you say yes to means you have to say no to something else. And so again, are you going to focus on the things that bring you success? Are you going to spend the time on your family? Are you going to spend the time on your business? Are you going to mess with the things that just don't really matter? I I think these are great takeaways. I'm, I'm going to have to like have a another soul searching moment with this particularly, because I think this is actually executable. I think there's a lot of great speakers that we've heard from glow that I think are theoretically good. And I think we do have to keep that in the back of our mind. I do think these though have been more of the, okay, 
you found your core values, your mission, your goals, objectives, et cetera, as a personal and professional. Um, but now how do you put rubber, you know, meets the road kind of yeah. thing. And I love that. So um, let me ask you guys this. And, uh, and it's, I can't believe it's almost uh, 30 minutes already. What is the one next step that you're going to take away after this conversation that you're going to apply to your business or to your life? So for me, I have um, a note and I'm just looking down, but the hundred day plan. So hundred days is November 8th. Just, well, that was maybe from yesterday. So <laughs> or take a day, but a uh, hundred day plan, like what is happening over these hundred days? Where do I want to go? Where do I want to get to? And really focused on that. Um, that's my takeaway. I love it. I love the hundred day plan. For me, it's the, the strategic IQ. Am I spending enough time thinking and am I doing spending enough time being tactical that I'm, am I doing the things that I need to do and remembering that just because I'm sitting and thinking or doing things that inspire me doesn't mean I'm wasting time, that my mind needs the opportunity to just think sometimes. Do you do walks, Sheila? Like, do you, do you strategically do like a walk where you just allow yourself to go, like, let your mind go wherever it wants to? No, um, I guess mentally I do. I don't physically go do a walk, um, but I have a chair. I have this beautiful round chair that I sit in and I, I just, I think through, and that's where I do, where I think about gratitude. I think about um, where I've been, where I'm going and what makes the biggest impact in my life. And every morning I spend, you know, half an hour in that chair and my, again, my first thing is, what am I grateful for? And when you start with gratitude first and think about all the blessings in my life, then everything else is so much easier. Then you can yeah. think about all of the things you need to do today in such a positive way that it, it, it energizes you. So you have your thinking time and then you move into that tactical time where it's, okay, now I'm energized. My head is clear and make it happen. Because if you don't take that time, sometimes you get so much in your mind that it's almost, it's almost as, as if you're paralyzed. You can't take that next step because you can't get out of your own way. And so you end up doing this, these mindless tasks because you feel like you have to do something. Yeah, you nailed that right there. Uh, what my takeaway was was really going back to quantifying your time and and understanding if that activity has actual value and merit. Because uh, it's you know our time is limited, we'll never get it back. Yeah, right. So wow, those are some great notes, and I think we can add more to it. And I think we could keep talking forever. Hey, Pamela, um, she says our brains have to be given the opportunity to run free. Uh, she gives a teacher analogy: recess. It allows refreshment uh, to go back and attack uh, the task that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, I think so much, so many of us getting like, we got to hustle, we got to be doing, we got to be running and doing, you know, it's like the Gary Vaynerchuk way. But the problem is you, your creativity is all in the stillness. Like you have, you know what I mean? And so we actually are missing out on that greatness. I'll tell you, that's probably a, you know, good to great when you're just in the constant hustle mode, you never give yourself that time to really think at a higher level and, and from that perspective. So it's just a, it's a never ending battle that we've got to get out of. I think each of us have gut instincts and because we get so busy, we don't listen to our, our inner voice and don't listen to that gut instinct. And then we end up making mistakes. If we had slowed down just a little bit, we would have taken a different path. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And like so, Mike talking about lost opportunity, like we think of yeah. income, we think of like all these things we can make, but we never think of the, you know, the lost opportunity too, that we're missing out on by not doing stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, Mike, thanks for bringing that up. So on that note, Sheila, you are awesome. And I'm so glad that we've connected. And um, so if an individual wants to get to know you or understand what Mog XP does, how can they get a hold of you? Well, I have a website that has all of my contact information and it is mogxp.com and I'm on LinkedIn and would love to connect with anybody who would like to, to have a little time together. And I'm happy to do one-on-ones with anyone in the group. 
Awesome. And I'm sure you're going to put yourself on the marketplace within the Glow member site because you can actually uh, list that out too and people can Fantastic. take advantage of it. So, Aaron, any final thoughts on Mr. Tony Jerry? I'll just say, I say this all the time. Um, I didn't say this last week because it wasn't my favorite one, I'll be honest with you. But Tony, <laughs> if you want to go to withglow.com, uh, Tony, you can get, you can sign up for a basic membership for free. You can watch this, take the notes. Uh, obviously you see every single one of us and very different things that we're each taking away from this. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to change something, change something in your business, you can go watch up to two of these sessions for free. Um, go out there and do like, t it's, it costs you nothing. Go watch this video, hang out with glow.com, G L O.com and go sign up for your free one. Watch the Tony episode from yesterday. And I'm telling you, you're gonna walk away with something. That's all I Absolutely. got. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I love the weekly speaker series. Again, that's why Afterglow exists. So we have the opportunity to talk about it and obviously, you know, uh, share with the world how awesome Sheila is, for example. One last parting thought, guys. Uh, we are Innovation Media Enterprises. We do produce podcasts. And this is one of our productions, if you will. So if you have any questions on how you can look at branding your podcast for your business, or looking at that kind of strategy discussion, we can absolutely help you with that. And obviously we complement with Mog XP. Uh, you know, we can do soup to nuts in so many different ways to really enhance your marketing uh, goals. So on that note, guys, I think we should wrap up this episode of Afterglow Podcast. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.